Hello, in this video we're taking our low poly rock that we made in the last video and we're quickly painting it. So this is part two of creating low poly game assets and this is a workflow that doesn't need any artistic skill. This course is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels and all courses are free. So this is where we got to last time with our low poly rock. If I press shift Z you can see the effects of the normal map that we created there. And now I want to paint. So let's go back to object mode. So it's already unwrapped, so we don't need to do that. All we have to do is go across to texture paint mode and create a new texture for it to paint onto. At the moment, we've got our normal map selected, hence why it looks like this. So we need to create a new texture down here. So let's click on the new. We'll call this rock color, and I'm going to Give it a 2 at the end, because I've done this before. 2048 by 2048, so it's got a nice good resolution. And click OK. Now we need to make sure it's in our node editor, so it becomes the active texture. Because if I now go into edit mode, and then back into texture paint mode, we can see the normal comes back on, because it's not in the node editor. So Shift A, texture, image texture bring that up there and we should have our rock colors 2 there we don't need to hook it up yet as long as it's selected it's the active texture but it hasn't appeared in here yet let's go into edit mode back into texture paint mode and there it's picked up as the active texture so what we need to do is bring a texture in to paint with that we're going to use as a stencil so under the texture tab the same way we did with the rocks we create a texture template. I'm going to quickly add a new brush and call this texture, all in capitals because some of them are called texture already. So I can easily go back to my texture draw brush. Then come down to the texture and click new. And then come over to here where our texture tab is. Make sure that the brush texture is selected and open up a texture. I've got lots of textures. You can find your own. Textures.com is a great place and if you look up some rock textures there, there's loads to choose from. The one I'm going to use is this lichen one here, because I quite like it. And there it is. Now at the moment, if I paint onto my rock, it's doing fine, but we get this visible seam here. That's because we're on tiled. And before, I used the anchored stroke, but you haven't got that option within texture painting. The best option, I believe, is the stencil. So when I choose the stencil, you can see a stencil comes on. We can move that object with the right click. Then I can paint this on. We can also scale it with shift and we can rotate it with control right click. So everything to move the stencil is all right click. So I'll move around a bit and paint on, and move around a bit and paint on. And just color it in nice and quickly for now. And I'll give you a few tips as to what to look out for. Now when I move down here, my plane's in the way, so I want to isolate my rock with the forward slash on your numpad, and then I'll just be able to see the rock for painting. And let's fill all that in, and make sure it's all colored. Now a couple of things to look out for. If you want to check your rock, then the best way is just to move your stencil out the way, and to see how it's going. And you can see there's lots of stretching across here that I need to fill in, and across here as well. And that was the way I was painting. So if I go over my rock again, I'm going to decrease the size of the brush and then always paint in the middle but don't go over the edges like that otherwise you'll get stretching. So I come round and always be painting in the middle of the rock. The other thing to be aware of is keeping your texture at the same distance. If I zoom right in now and start painting this bit has a smaller texture detail than the rest of it so try and keep to the same distance and every now and again, pull that texture away and see how it's going. Remember, right click to do that. There's one other thing to be aware of, and that's if you're getting visible seams, that's tiny black lines where it can see the black background. If I go into edit mode, I'll show you what I mean. The seams are the edges, and mine overlap quite away, so I shouldn't get any problems. If you want to change that, you go into texture paint mode, into the options, and make sure your bleed is turned up. And it should be fine on 8 because we have a nice island margin. The only time that's a problem 
is when you haven't got much of an island margin, which is the gap between your islands, and it bleeds into the other one. Another thing to look out for is making sure you've got a good texture resolution here and don't go too far out because the detail level won't be high on your object. So you can go quite close in really. Maybe I'm going a bit too far out here but for the sake of speed I'm doing that. Perhaps preferably I ought to be this sort of distance in. Let's have a look at the detail level between the two. Not too bad so I'm doing fine I think. And have a good check around, make sure there's no stretching. There's a bit of stretching there, for example. You can make these textures procedurally, but I quite like using this method as I feel I've just got that bit more control. If you're very good at procedural textures, then you won't need to do this. But I feel like it's a longer process, for me anyway. Okay, so that looks good. Now what you must make sure is that you say image, save, image. Now we can hook it up and see what our rock looks like in rendered mode. Let's go back to object mode, shift Z, and it's looking very nice. It's looking a bit orangey because I've got an HDR that's a desert landscape, I think, which I'll change now. There we go, that's a bit better. Back to my rock texture. And I've got my roughness turned up quite high here because it's a lichen type rock, and they're quite rough. Now that's probably good enough for most people, and I'm fairly happy with that, but I'm going to go through a bit of advanced detail in the node editor and see what we can do with this. So if you've done the node school, which are at the end of the beginner's series, you can have a go at the next bit. So perhaps we want some of the lichen parts to be a bit bumpy. I'm going to use this texture and plug it into my bump. So let's zoom out just a touch. I'll bring these down here. And I'll just duplicate this texture for now so there's no confusion. They're both the same texture, but it might just get a bit tangled up. So in order to do that and make this texture go into a bump, we press Shift A, Vector, Bump, and that goes between the normal map and the principled shader. So at the moment it's not doing anything because there's nothing new, it's just going straight through. But I can plug this image texture into the height. And you can see it creates quite a mess. So I can easily change the strength in here. And it's got a bit of bumpiness there where the lichen is. What I'm going to do is change this to non-color data and then it will just be the light and darks affecting it and just quickly track around my object and see how it's going. And that's with. So just a tiny bit of bump around the lichen which gives it a bit of texture. That's great. Now what I'd like to try is having different parts with different shininess. So if I bring my image texture here into the roughness. Let's just try that now. It's a fairly light color, so it'll be fairly rough, but it looks just a bit too shiny, as you can see there. So I need to decrease this somehow, and the best way to do that, Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Okay, it's done nothing at the moment because I haven't changed the scale at all, but the whiter I make this, the less shiny it will be. So white being one, and therefore full roughness black being zero, therefore no roughness and shiny. But if I change this black and change it to about 0.3, we can see we've got more roughness in there. And now it's adaptive to my image texture. And I think that looks quite nice. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed this quick couple of tutorials. Do let me know how you're getting on in the comments. And remember there's a Discord server if you're running into any difficulty, you can chat to all of us there, show off your artwork, ask any questions, and there's a very friendly bunch of people on there.